In this lab, you will be exploring circuits having resistors in series and parallel combinations. You'll even analyze a complex circuit with three branches and two voltage sources using Kirchhoff's rules. When resistors are placed in series, the equivalent resistance is simply the sum of the individual resistances. In the actual circuit, we will place the series resistors in a daisy chain line with each resistor bridging a gap in the circuit board. Measure and record each individual resistance value, and then measure the resistance of the entire series combination. When we connect a DC voltage source to the series combination, Kirchhoff's loop rule tells us that the sum of the voltage drops around the closed loop is zero. That is, the voltage drop across the entire combination V is equal to the sum of the individual voltage drops. A circuit diagram of the series resistors shows that the current is read by an ammeter placed in series between the resistors and the voltage source. The voltmeter, on the other hand, is placed in parallel with whichever element is reading the voltage across. As shown here, the voltmeter is reading the voltage across the entire combination between points A and D. You will systematically move the voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across each resistor separately. The left-hand multimeter is being used as an ammeter. The voltage source is placed across the series combination and the voltage VAD is set precisely to 15 volts. The current through this circuit is read once and should not change just because the voltmeter is moved around. The voltmeter is placed across each of the three resistors in turn to read VCD, then VBC, and finally VAB. The sum of these three voltages should add up to the 15 volts total from the power supply. For resistors in parallel, we add the inverses to determine the inverse of the equivalent resistance. Here are two resistors placed in parallel. Remember that the rows of holes along the long sides of the circuit board are connected along the entire length. The red and black jumper wires are included here so that later we can measure currents through each branch of the circuit. We now connect a voltage source and use an ammeter to measure the total current I. Then we measure the current I1 through the first resistor. Finally, we measure the current I2 through the second resistor. According to Kirchhoff's node or junction rule, the sum of the currents entering a node equals the sum of the currents exiting the same node. Thus, I equals I1 plus I2. These current measurements are made in practice by replacing each jumper in turn by the ammeter. Replacing the black jumper allows measurement of I, the total current, through the entire circuit. Replacing the first red jumper allows measurement of I1, and replacing the second red jumper allows I2 to be measured. The practicality of Kirchhoff's loop and node rules are that they allow us to determine currents in more complicated situations with more than one voltage source and multiple branches. After assembling the circuit, we measure the current through each resistor in turn to get values for I1, I2, and I3. In practice, this means simply replacing each jumper with the ammeter. 
Don't be overly concerned with the sign of the currents you read. You may record absolute values for these currents if you wish. We can predict the current through each resistor using Kirchhoff's rules. At the node marked in red at the base of the circuit, we note that all currents as drawn are flowing into the node, thus I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. Circulating around the loop shown in red, we see a voltage gain of 10 volts, followed by a drop of 2200 I1 across R1, and a gain of voltage of 3300 times I2 across R2. These voltage gains and losses around the closed loop must add to zero. Circulating around the second loop gives a gain of 5 volts, a drop of 3300 I2, and a gain of 4700 I3. We now have three equations for the three unknown currents. Use your favorite linear system of equation solver to perform the math and determine the currents. In the actual analysis for comparison with your measurements, don't use the resistance values indicated by the color bands in your equations. They're too inaccurate. Use your actual measured values of resistance in the system of equations to get good answers. Thank you.